I'm Rob Lucuria, Senior Editor here at Gold Derby with Clyde Phillips, creator and showrunner for the Dexter revival, New Blood. Clyde, you departed as showrunner of the original Dexter series following a fourth season that saw Dexter take down the Trinity Killer. It was Dexter at its peak. And then unfortunately, the show never really maintained that level, in my opinion. And I'm wondering, what did you want to achieve or address this time around to make up for where the show perhaps sputtered towards its disappointing series finale? Well, basically, I wanted to, we all wanted to not just redeem the end of the, uh, of, of, the uh, of season eight, but to acknowledge that time had passed and this is not Dexter season nine um, and to regain the trust of the audience because I think in the last four years, particularly in the last couple of years of the show, um, all of the code and intimacy and rigor uh, that Dexter would put himself through slipped away. And then the audience was watching a different show than they had signed up for in the first four years. And I think we've, um, we've achieved that. I know we've achieved that in Dexter New Blood. Yeah, I can't quite put my finger on it, but the first four episodes I've seen, there's just that same sharp, it's just very pacey and it just reminds me so much of early season Dexters. So good. Um, now you've already talked at length about how the revival came about, but what I would more like to know about is after all the pressure of reviving this character and in some ways redeeming him or trying to, um, did this season and particularly the, the series finale, did it meet your lofty expectations? It exceeded them, actually. Um, I had, well, first of all, Michael C. Hall, I mean, is extraordinary. As, as an actor, as a man, he's one of the smartest people I know. When he asks a question, it means something. And I had Marco Siega from the original series come back and direct and was an executive producer, as is Michael, uh, an executive producer. Um, and we worked, I got, you know, the phone call to do this in July, 2019. And we worked for a year and a half, partly because of COVID on the script. So we really had the scripts um, in great shape. And then we shot for 119 days, uh, chasing the weather, chasing snow, um, all over Massachusetts. So I grew up in Boston and I hadn't been to 90% of the towns that we, uh, we were in. We were out in Western and Northern Massachusetts and uh, were welcomed um, by, the, by the towns, by the, by the uh, local people and by the local businesses. And it, it just turned out wonderful. Yeah, so you were mentioning offline that you've seen the series finale. Um, just can you just tell us everything quietly or sure i'll just whisper and then that way it won't be public <laughs> I, I i just uh just before this zoom i was watching my first time going through the finale i was watching the director's cut um it's a, it's a script i wrote um and um the director had called me marcos had called me and said he's just finished with this cut and he thinks it's the best thing he's ever directed and i think it's the best thing i've ever, I've ever written and uh, I was watching with tears, tears streaming down my face. Wow, that is, that has got to be so rewarding as a creator and a showrunner to have something hit you so viscerally, right? Uh, yes, rewarding was a word uh, that I would use um, to have everything fall into place, particularly after such an arduous schedule in these arduous times, to have everything fall into place. I'm always amazed when I write something and then the actor says it, you know, um, and Michael and I have such a bond that we work things out before we, before we shoot it. And he just, he shows up ready and nails it all the time and gives me whatever, gives me and the director, whatever nuance we need or comes up with another idea at, in the moment. And it's ultimately just so satisfying. And we're so lucky to look at, I mean, look what we do for a living. Everybody wants to do what we do. We're so lucky, you and I, uh, and the others on this panel, we're just so lucky to be able to do this. Yeah, do you be able to talk about these works of art that move us and excite, you know, it's just, yeah, this is a, this is a true gift and it's amazing that we get to talk about it. The show is set 10 years after the original series finale. 
Dexter has moved upstate, so it's in a much different environment. It's not Miami, it's freezing cold upstate New York. What was the thinking behind making it as far away from Miami as possible and trying to live as a normal guy, even though this dark passenger obviously always lingers under the surface? Well, there are a couple of things behind it. First of all, we wanted the show to look and feel different in every way from the moment the first frame comes up and we're listening to Iggy Pop all of a sudden. Um, Another part is that Dexter has moved to the small town of Iron Lake, New York, which was actually Shelburne Falls, Massachusetts, where we shot it. Um, population 2,760. Uh, and there's so much less temptation there for his dark passenger. <clears throat> um, he's just a, a country boy now, living out in a cabin, which we do saw, we built that cabin that's on the lake. Um, so a year ago right now, there were a bunch of laborers, men and women building that cabin in freezing weather. Um, and if he lived in LA or Chicago or Miami, there are many, 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 many people who deserve his kill table. Here, not so much. In Iron Lake, not so much. But as Michael keeps saying, this is Dexter. Somebody's going to die. And we managed to, I think, gracefully achieve that. Oh, yeah. And no spoilers. This is the first episode is aired, but the the person who ends up kind of um, copying that uh, first death, I was like, yeah, I'm good with this. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm happy. Um, now, audiences will wonder how many of the original cast we will see. We know Jennifer Carpenter's back. She co-stars as a version of Deb, Dex's conscience. Um, the show is not the same without those two, so I'm really glad you were able to bring her onto the show. Was it ever a question of her not coming on? No, it was always it was always there, and you know Michael and and Jennifer have their own history, and um, whenever she was on the set, she elevated Michael. Michael elevated her. It was just a, it was a lot of fun. And then there were a couple of other um, actors uh, that are coming back. Um, John Lithgow. I mean, when you try to keep secrets in this day of uh, social media, and so John Lithgow was um, nominated for an Emmy for Perry Mason. And somebody asked him a question about Dexter because they'd seen him on a plane. And he said, oh, my gosh, yes, it was great. I got to see Michael Hall and Clyde Phillips and Jennifer <laughs> Carpenter. Well, Jennifer was supposed to be a secret. Um, but we realized that it just creates more interest in, uh, for the audience and the audience would be satisfied. Yeah, I mean, uh, John won an Emmy for that role as the Trinity Killer. Yes. Um, so I'm really glad that he'll be back, obviously, I assume, in flashbacks. Um, but yeah, and that's a pretty huge get to be able to get him back on the show as well. It was, you know what? It was a phone call. I just, he's a friend of mine. I called him. I said, you want to do it? He said, I'm in, uh, tell me the date and let's do it. But you know what? I honestly, I think with all the great actors on the show, the find for me was Jack um, Alcott as Harrison Morgan, Dexter's son. Um, I had not really been familiar with his work and I am just completely drawn to him. I just think he is going to be the big star that comes out of this show. Do you agree that we've got more to come with him? Well, first of all, we found Jack Alcott because he was in Good Lord Bird, yep. uh, for, also for Showtime, and, and watched him. And insofar as the... Uh, you trying to pry something out of me uh, about the ending. All, of, all I can say is never say never. And that's, that's as far as I can go. Wow. I'm very excited by that because he's, that's a fascinating character that you've written there. Um, final question is, this is purely a limited series, right? There's no chance that you'll keep it going. That's asking me the same question. So <laughs> <laughs> good, good try, not going there. It's not a limited series. It's a revival. Uh, so th th there's a, a difference in Emmy category stuff. Um, that's right. So, yeah. That's why I'm asking. But okay, it's good to know. <laughs> um, all right, well, that's good because, okay, so, you know what? We're just going to have to be patient and Showtime will keep premiering these episodes and people will, will watch and I'm sure you'll be hearing more from fans like me clamoring for more. But in the meantime, Clyde, thank you for coming on today. We're going to bring you back shortly for our panel chat. Okay, thank you, Robert. See you in a little while.